I gave people all the stuff they really needed. Social security checks, utility bills, TV guide. I want a TV guidance counselor. everybody, welcome to TV Guidance Counselor. I'm Ken Reed, as always, your TV Guidance Counselor, the Boston comedian who has been talking to interesting people about classic television each and every week since Valentine's Day 2014. And this week we have a returning guest to the show. It is Tom Shabilla. Uh, he is an author and a, a fellow monster kid. Tom previously was on because he wrote a book about the 1966 fall TV season, which was the first all-color TV season. And this time he has a new book, which is about 1964 and the post-James Bond spy craze uh, in the world. More in, in America, but stuff that aired in America. We talk about it here uh that's i love that era this is a really fun chat uh we don't always get to do early 60s editions of the tv guide so this is a fun one i think you'll enjoy it buy his book you can go to amazon or anywhere books are sold uh, i put links in the show description here you can also just email me at tvguidancecounselor@gmail.com or ken and i can read.com or hit me up on the social media or on patreon or all those things uh yeah that's where we're at i'm looking forward to it buy the book Let's listen to this week's episode. So please sit back, sit backs, sit your backs. <laughs> okay. Uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of TV Guidance Counselor with my returning guest, Tom Shabilla. TV is my friend and it has been always there for me in time. Returning to the show from the wilds of Pennsylvania, Tom Shabilla, how are you? Doing great. Thanks for having me back. I, I'm I'm really excited to dive into this TV guide today. I'm very excited to have you back. You you've I feel like it wasn't that long ago that you were on. No, was was not that long ago. Maybe about a year and a half, two years ago, uh, maybe even less. I don't even know. You you've pumped out a book already, <laughs> a second a second yes. book in that short amount of time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think uh, last time I was on, I, I, I had made mention of of this book that I was uh, working on. And at the time, I didn't have a publisher and uh, I didn't really have any direction for the book. Um, but uh, since then, it was picked up by Applause Books. And so new publisher on this one and uh, still in my same strike zone yeah. with this next book. Uh, last book was Primetime 1966-67. Uh, it was about the first year that every show was in color. Uh, this year, uh, my book is James Bond and the 60s Spy Craze. Yes. So like I said, same strike zone of the 1960s. And it's about those James Bond films that came out in the 1960s and all the subsequent imitators, uh, spoofs, and just flat-out knockoffs yeah. that, that came out during that time. And my criteria for it was it had to have uh, played in a theater in America. Okay, so it's all films that you're talking about. Yes, it's all films, yeah. and there is a, there's TV as well. So it's so. Uh, did I send you Rob Hill of Bad Movie Bible's uh, James Bond knockoffs video? Oh, I, I no, I don't. Oh, think so. I got to send it to you. He does a very good. Yeah, please. Uh, it's like an hour long assessment of like all these <laughs> things, but he he makes a, a good point here. Um, so the issue that you picked is from nineteen sixty. Where are we? Nineteen sixty five. Five. Uh, yeah, no, four. Twenty sixty four. October twenty fourth to thirtieth sixty four. So we've gone. Even though I think you're younger than me, and the last time we did to sixty six, we've gone further back in the past by two years here. <laughs> um, but this is Robert Vaughn on the cover from Men from Uncle. But the uh, the interesting thing the point that rob makes is that sort of the the, the biggest impact bond had in america was on television <laughs> yeah uh there, yeah certainly you know yeah all those all those shows were just directly uh impacted especially the american made ones and even shows like a secret agent man were brought back because of James Bond. So. Yeah. And it's, and I think, and you'll correct me, but I, I think the only like U S made sort of bond movies are, are the, are the Matt Helm movies and like the Flint movies. It's like four Matt movies. Helm, Flint, those were the ones that were the big ones, but there were, there were a bunch of, of, uh, 
knockoffs. But, but so the, really hit. the culturally we're we're post JFK's assassination. Yes. Uh, so the fifties are over. <laughs> um, I, th- I always kind of argue the fifties went till like 1963, basically till when Kennedy no, got absolutely, shot. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we're post World War II. So this is the cold war. This is sort of not the height of the cold war, but we're mm-hmm. like, this is the cold war's sophomore year. <laughs> let's say it's yeah it's just come back from summer break after being a freshman and it's it, it broke up with his girlfriend put on a couple pounds yeah but yeah, yeah it knows kind of how the the dorm works uh so this is the cold war sort of second year and weirdly because <clears throat> i always when you i first started talking about doing this uh episode because i'm very 80s focused and i'm sort of look at the cold cold war culturally in these different decades the 60s cold war is kind of fun yeah. The 70s and, Cold War is dystopian, but the 80s Cold War is apocalyptic. Yes. And the really co- one of the cool things, speaking of Kennedy, Kennedy was a big Bond fan. Yes. Kennedy was, was you know, really one of the first cheerleaders of James Bond. He added From Russia With, to, from Russia with Love to his favorite books. And that really started up the cycle of, hey, you know, these, these are films that we could make. And... Uh, I had found in the Kennedy archives a, a lot of references to James Bond and even uh, a conversation that he had with Andrew Dulles of the CIA, pretty much implying like, hey, you know, we should use these kind of James Bond techniques in what we do. Whoa. <laughs> you know, so it's a life imitate or art imitating life, I guess. Yeah, because the CIA was new. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the CIA was yeah. post-World War II, right? Yeah. From, so yeah. yeah. So they they uh, they certainly that was an interesting thing that I found, you know, and and uh, yeah, but yeah, the Cold War was fun in the '60s. Yeah, and, weirdly, uh, of all, the bizarre <laughs> thing, it was just like seemed kind of cute almost. <laughs> A lot of sign, countersign type stuff and yeah. cool gadgets. Yeah, that was the other piece. It was mixed with that post-World War II, very American thing, even though Bond is very English, but that very American thing of technology will save us, um, innovation and moving forward and, you know, <laughs> inventing and that sort of thing. Because uh, most people, and especially kids, because that was the thing, weirdly kids for the most part more than anyone else sort of gravitated towards this spy stuff. It replaced the Western outright almost. And as yeah. far as kids, oh, absolutely. Uh, certainly in toys. And that's another thing that I cover in the book. Uh, actually the, the really cool thing was uh, the agent X toys that uh, it was a um, Kurt Russell. Yes. Was the, as a kid, was the, 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 the as, as Kurt Russell as a kid was the, uh, uh, the spokesman for it. And I, I really love Kurt Russell. So, it was cool seeing him with that. The only one who's ever starred in a movie with Elvis and then played Elvis, Kurt Russell. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah. was a minor league ball player. Um, yep. So, and also this this also sort of fits in with that sort of rat packy, misogynistic, uh, you know, leather and cigars, whiskey neat kind of culture of the 60s is very and much that this. was the soundtrack to be writing this yes i needed to listen to that kind of like loungy music to write this book and yeah and we saw that like you said with, with james bond films but uh turning it up to 11 was matt helm yes uh starring dean martin and uh, and also the Derek flint movies you know again that those turned it up Turned up the the la- the lounge music, the leather, the misogyny to to eleven that James Bond didn't. Yeah, weirdly, if people haven't seen those movies, they're almost like they're basically parodies. I mean, they're comedies. Right. Um, those movies are the biggest influence on Austin Powers. Weirdly, right. because they're very American. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the strange part. Yeah, and and I I, I I'm I, I'm very confident I didn't see as, as, when I was younger. I never saw the Matt Helm movies. I'd seen James Bond movies, never saw Matt Helm, never saw Derek Flint. And then when I was a little older, I saw those and, oh, that's, <laughs> that's where these come from. Yeah, well, they didn't care. They didn't continue as a, as a franchise. I think there's two, what, two Matt, uh, three Matt Helm movies? No, there's four. Um, people would know them from, they're, they're featured in Once Upon a Time in America. Because um, Sharon Tate's in one of them. Once um, Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes. Oh, well, that's what I meant. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, in two Flint movies. So I she's think. in the Wrecking Crew. Yes, the Wrecking. And crew. that was actually part of the reason 
why these those films didn't continue. Apparently, uh, Dean Martin was very upset about Sharon Tate's death, and that was possibly one of the reasons why they didn't continue. Well, I mean, total other conversation. Sort of that murder is what ended the '60s, and you know that was well, that even too. though it was before the '60s ended, that was the the sort of last blips of idealism post JFK assassination were finally murdered <laughs> that when that happened. So that Man, makes sense. It's, yeah. it's hard to have that sort of Dean Martin type character. And I think the, you know, we got those paranoid spy movies in the seventies, right? The, the everyone's against you or you're crossing into East and West Germany, like murder seems like to have consequence more real. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and in these, these sort of the, the, the deaths in these feel very murder. She wrote. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. And in, and yeah, in the seventies, the seventies definitely picked up on, you know, were a lot more grittier spy films and, and, and everything else. It, it was just you know, very gritty films within that time frame. that, uh, except for James Bond movies, they didn't really produce much after that yeah i mean espionage became more paranoid than heroic mm -hmm. like it was you know the you conversation the conversation yeah 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 <laughs> there yeah. we go yeah um and the conversation's definitely one that i that i look at parallax uh, view is that what i'm thinking of oh yeah three days of condor like that kind of stuff yeah um, um yeah the it, conversation yeah and, and a little bit more realistic sure uh one thing that i i, I again the parodies and the spoofs and the knockoffs uh, were the ones that pushed James Bond into the super spy realm. Yeah. Uh, if you look at Dr. No, if you look at uh, From Russia with Love, you know, he has pretty basic gadgets, uh, nothing really you know, out of the ordinary, just some cool spy gadgets, but that's about it. Then as we get into Goldfinger, as we get into Thunderball, that's where the stuff starts really getting over the top. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they're competing with, and then the whole Euro spy genre mm -hmm. that went on way longer than anywhere else, kind of into the nineties <laughs> almost. Um, you know, that was, it, it, that always fascinates me too, where Europe, mostly f those sort of French, Italian, Spanish co-productions, mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't know what country actually the made them. Commissar X. Yeah. Those really sort like of that. took up the mantle a lot. And then weirdly Japan, like mm -hmm. all of the Japanese spy stuff, which again sort of went into the eighties <laughs> in a weird way. In that, in that you know, skinny ties and sharp suits kind of yeah. way, um, was very strange that those were the areas that really like ran with it. Yeah, yeah I could see that. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and yeah, everywhere else just kind of died. Out. You're like, right when once kind of the, the end of the nineteen sixty nine, um, even the James Bond films changed after that. Yeah, you know, it was. And to live and let die, live and let die was a essentially a black exploitation yeah. film, and he had the uh, forty four Magnum in that. Yeah, because you know. now they're competing with Dirty Harry and that sort of stuff. Right. So it's really uh, a sort of a strange thing. But um, so we have Man from Uncle on the cover, Robert Vaughn, yep. and uh, this is a show that was massive, massive, and it aired in syndication when we were growing up, but really never caught on with like other generations weirdly no surprisingly and i you know and i'm somebody that grew up watching uh nick at night a lot you know i'm i'm a i'm a nick at night kind of guy and they never really i don't ever really remember the man from uncle being on it may have been on pbs a little bit yeah that's about I, it i would in, see stuff my, like my area. the saint and the the avengers like mm -hmm. that stuff aired all the time. Um, right. And you know, they're, they're different. Like they're definitely campier. Like the Avengers has more in common with Batman 66 than man from uncle, but eventually the man from uncle got there. Yes. Yes. It absolutely did. Especially when we started getting the girl from uncle. <laughs> right. But the, the early ones, yeah, those were not serious, but more serious than the Avengers. Yeah. Cause there was an overlap between get smart and man from uncle. I think they were both making new episodes at the same time for like mm -hmm. the very end of man from uncle. And it's virtually impossible to tell the difference in the shows at some point. <laughs> like one is an intentional parody and one's supposed to be the, the real one, but they're kind of yeah. the same. I think at one point there was a cupcake gun or something. Yeah. Like that. Oh, I, yeah. that, that sounds like a really bad 
like college rock band. <laughs> I think I played them on my college radio. Yeah, show. yeah, they they signed to a major for one album. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that sort of sets the stage for where we are here. Um, this issue is also very strange. There's there's an ad for nasal spray in here that is just like a close up of twenty five people's noses. <laughs> And this sounds new for noses, but it also this sounds so dangerous. I don't know what medication this is, but it says the nasal spray that helps you sleep. <laughs> it sounds and it's called it's, it's filled with narcotics. It's called four way. <laughs> what cancer causing what? or like bizarre thing? It's on page three of the PDF. I know. I'm I'm looking at it and. What what are the four ways? I don't know. There's two nostrils. Yeah, I, I you know what? I don't want to know. That sounds like a <laughs> that sounds like maybe it'll it'll help you sleep, but that's going to be a rough morning. <laughs> uh, then for TV guide of all things, there's a really well-written article about Lincoln. And it's yes. the presidential candidates and how they're aware of the camera and like media literacy with presidential candidates, you know, going back to the still cameras and film and it's a really well done interesting article it's, it's a well written article and it timely obviously sure where in a time when you know people care about you know how a president or somebody looks <laughs> yeah yeah and then we have the man from uncle article which even it it, it recognizes that this is tongue-in-cheek the article is with gun well, and I want, in well, before we get to the man from uncle yes. article i want to talk about the tupperware oh yes that uh, that ad is beautiful. It's a beautiful Tupperware. Yeah. This is the one. This is the thing that popped out on me. Yep. Like, are there still Tupperware parties? Do people still have Tupperware? Parties? If they the do, stuff? it's a euphemism for something gross. I don't think they have <laughs> them in the way that this is a Tupperware party. So this was, I, I Tupperware is sort of the original pyramid scheme for, yes. and uh, although the product was good, <laughs> it wasn't like yeah. supplements. Um, and this was, <laughs> yeah, this was for like housewives can have their own money because they'll be selling Tupperware, says Anita okay. Bryant. And we had these, I mean, I'm looking at this right now and the, the one it's like a yeah. juice container with like a mm -hmm. handle. We definitely had that. Yep. Yeah. Um, but there's like a, just a series of very fifties looking, uh, sort of pastels like that, that fifties pink and blue. I think I took some from my grandmother's house and they're, Still good. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we also had some of my parents clearly got for their wedding in the 70s that were just like brown and beige and orange. It was <laughs> just like the worst colors on earth. <laughs> it's like great. no food looks good in this. Yeah. So this is a, this is a two page spread for Tupperware. And uh, yeah. yeah, the 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 sort of pop art photograph is, yeah. is really is legitimately kind of cool. <laughs> That's what I wanted. I, I just, I said, if I just can talk about this Tupperware yeah. for the next hour, I'll be happy. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah. So then we, you know, we get into the the article about Man from Uncle, and it kind of goes over a lot of the stuff we were just talking about. Um, and then we get into the issue proper. So let's uh, let and the article written by Peter Bogdanovich. Yes, yes, yes. So I don't so. think he made his first movie yet. He hadn't made seconds. Yet. No, that wasn't. That was Frankenheimer. Uh, he may. Have, he may have made. Targets. targets that's what I'm thinking with Boris Karloff. Yeah. Um which which a movie I absolutely love. It's great. That's one of those movies if you never saw it um is is certainly one of those movies where people talk about it and they go, "Oh, you couldn't make that movie today." And 9 times out of 10 I go, "No, you can make that movie yeah, today." Yeah. You would. Targets <laughs> I go, mm, I yeah. don't know, this is a rough one." Yeah. It's uh yeah, it, and it was a Corman movie, and it was a very bizarre movie that he managed to take it some very strange directions. But yes, right. when I always talk about TV Guide having uh pretty notable people writing articles for them, Peter Bogdanovich is yeah. one of the people on that list for sure. Uh, so Saturday, we're October twenty fourth, nineteen sixty four. So we're Halloween week here. Uh, so there is a lot of Halloween content on here, or like shows that don't normally have Halloween content have, have broken out kind of the spooky stuff uh like the show hawkeye i love, I love the uh i love the spooky stuff uh, uh, it's great time in television so this is the show hawkeye which i believe is a western it's on in the afternoon but i mentioned it because the episode's called the witch and it says weird incidents terrorize a frontier town in spite of hawkeye's efforts to disprove the witch stories strange murders increase the settler's horror and it stars lon chaney jr and john hurt 
You know, and I'm I I I absolutely need to look this episode up because I'm I'm a, a, a you know I'm a monster kid, and I don't think I've ever seen this episode and of with Lon Chaney. So I'm I'm usually all about. And that. This is going to be very drunk, Lon Chaney. <laughs> <laughs> if. 50s Lon Chaney was drunk Lon Chaney. 60s Lon Chaney was obliterated. Yes, Lon Chaney. yes. This is blackout Lon Chaney. <laughs> so what? Uh, what jumped out at you here for Saturday night? So Saturday night. Okay, so so we started off in the evening. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a, I'm a wrestling guy. You know, the the one thing and the person that had this episode had this uh, this one also would watch wrestling. Yes. Uh, so I think I I think I definitely check that out over. Uh, uh, over Mr. Magoo as much as I do like a lot Mr. of Magoo. wrestling. And then there's by the way, a lot of wrestling, wrestling from in Buffalo. Here. Modern wrestling. Yeah. yeah, like in this Saturday, there's three different wrestling shows. Um, I th- don't think they're all the same thing airing like multiple times because the no. the one at six o'clock is uh, points out that it's from Buffalo. Buffalo. Yes. <laughs> Unless they're wrestling and- Buffalo. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so th- that's that's certainly certainly going to be my my look at this. And and, and as much as I do want to watch strikes and spares, <laughs> uh, I, I'm not really I'm kind of unsure of what that is, but uh, it's, it's got to be some bowling. kind of bowling yeah. uh, thing. Um, and yeah, Mr. Uh, Magoo in prime time. I never thought of Mr. that as a prime time show. Time. Yeah, yeah, it's a very very. Uh, uh, very briefly, I think. Oh, you um, know what? This is pre. I mean, this is post Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol, so I, this may be a special. So this is Mr. Okay. Magoo doing the Three Musketeers. So I, I think after the Christmas special one, they did a series of Mr. Magoo in like other plays and literature. I've never seen this, but I have to assume that's what that is. That sounds that sounds pretty good. Um, so then after that. Uh, I, I, after, after wrestling, I'm, I'm switching over to Johnny Quest. Yeah. Uh, jo- Johnny Quest is uh, just a lot of soundtrack alone for Johnny Quest gets it for me. Yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong with Johnny Quest. It's it's funny because Tim Matheson was Johnny. Yes. Uh, yeah. or young Tim Matheson. And that yeah, show, if Tim people Matheson. watch Venture Brothers, Johnny Quest is Venture Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, big, big, uh, big Johnny Quest fan as well. I, I, I do like that. Um, at, at seven o'clock, uh, Highway Patrol. Yes, with Roger Crawford. Uh, if you never saw Broad- Highway Patrol, uh, this is an awesome show. Uh, it, it mostly ends with Roger Crawford getting into a fist fight with a guy in a in the uh, um, in a cave somewhere. Speaking of big drinkers, <laughs> speaking of big drinkers, Roger Crawford uh, certainly. Uh, would would be that. So a 12-year-old girl unable to hear or speak uh, is taken as a hostage by two thieves who has attacked and robbed her father. Is this post Wait Until Dark? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I I don't know. Sounds very influenced. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, And then, um, well, you know, it's 7.30, uh, sticking with my book. I I do want to watch The Outer Limits, but in order to promote my book, I'm watching The Saint. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with that, to so Roger Moore, you know, in that who one, became so. James Bond later, mostly because yes. he was the Saint. Um, and when he yeah. left, he was replaced uh, with um, Ian Ogilvie, who is also very good on The Saint. This one is a weird one. This one is them sort of taking on. They're not quite hippies. They're like youth revolutionaries <laughs> they're like it's called the revolution racket and you know we're we're 64 so it's sort of and it's from the uk so they're sort of beatniks but more like uk like austin powery types <laughs> that are <laughs> planning a revolution yeah that 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 we're gonna go with because yeah not not quite hippies yet right we're, we're getting there um so kind of the the midway point um and then at uh, eight o'clock. Oh, okay. So, so this is the Magoo and yep. Three Musketeers at eight. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I'll I guess I'll go with that. Maybe. Eh, no, Gilligan's Island. Gilligan's Island. Uh, Got to promote uh, my other book, Prime Time, nineteen sixty six, sixty seven. We're watching Gilligan's Island. And the little listing too. There's a nice plug for next week's TV guide. Uh, after the description of the show, it says, uh, "It costs a lot to build a desert island." See next week's TV guide. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. That's cool. <laughs> um, 
and I think last time we did talk about Lawrence Welk as well. Yes. Uh, that, uh, you know, cer- certainly uh, growing up, uh, again, you know, we, we, like we said, if growing up in, in the uh, uh, 80s, 90s, uh, Lawrence Welk, uh, any time I was dropped off at my grandparents' house for the weekend, uh, no matter what grandparent, we had to watch Lawrence Welk. Yeah. Uh, we also had a ballroom dancing show in, uh, in Wilkesburg, <laughs> so, so we had to watch that as well. Um, but, and before uh, we get to Sunday, I do want to mention there's a great ad in here for The Late Show at 11.35 on uh, Channel 7. This is in upstate New York, I think. Um, it's a double feature of Mill of the Stone Women, which is a really weird Italian movie. Uh, a man visiting a lovely mill house is strangely attracted to a woman he meets there is the way they describe it, which does not sound like a horror movie. <laughs> that doesn't sound like the no, I've seen that movie. Not like that movie at all. But the ad is hilarious because the for some reason, the local ad paste up guy decided to make his own ad for this movie. <laughs> and he took like a, a, a statue of a woman and kind of turned it upside down and then like removed her head and put it like further on. the. It's very weird. There's a windmill there. I, too. I don't know what the windmill's doing. I guess that's a mill. Um, um, yeah. And uh, and then it's paired with First Man in Space from 1959, uh, two movies that could Beautiful. not be more different. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I was and I, that was the other uh, thing that I when I was looking at this, uh, that was one other thing that I that I note that I kind of noted in my head that you know uh, again especially at this time and and, and growing up again 80s 90s you know. Uh, Hopefully you can catch a cool movie like this. Yes. Uh, at, at, at some point, you know, it may. Air, w- w- oh, okay. So this this came on at, at, at eleven thirty five. Yeah. So it's like okay, got to stay up. I have to I have to I have to check this movie out. It better be great. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, th- that movie actually got a, a really cool re release. Oh yeah, fairly recently from Mondo Macabro. I think put it out or who was it? Ma- I think it was Arrow. Was it Arrow that did Mill of the Stone Women? Yeah, I think so. But. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a real cool movie, and and yeah, certainly one of the best, uh, better, I guess, Italian horrors of the time. A couple so. things on Sunday morning, which again is outside the purview, but they caught my eye because this is Halloween week. There's a kids show on at 11:30 a.m. called Discovery 64, which wouldn't really be that notable, but this episode is called The Weird oh. World of Witchcraft. Actress Margaret Hamilton, the witch- Wicked Witch of the West and the Wizard of Oz, joins Frank Buxton and Virginia Gibson for a look at black magic, sorcery, and witch hunting. <laughs> What kid doesn't want to get up after church on a Sunday and watch the weird world of witchcraft? That's great. I would love uh, to see that. I, that has to be lost. Yeah. I, I don't know. I have to look for this one up. However, also at the same time, uh, you can watch Spook Chasers. With the Bowery Boys. With the Bowery Boys. Yes. Uh, so that that's that's really cool uh, as well. Uh, Hunts Hall and uh, um, Leo Gorsi. Play, you know, if you don't know, uh, you know, playing the same characters until they were 60 years yep, old. Yep. Uh, still playing teenagers. And then related to spy stuff at one o'clock, the show Fury, which I've never heard of, but it says is a drama, it says Joey and Packy. Sorry, UK listeners uh, give a Halloween party. They discover that two of their guests are practical jokers. But Peter Graves is in this show as Jim. Wow. <laughs> We would obviously okay. be in Mission Impossible later. I feel like Mission Impossible was the last gasp of the TV of the '60s TV spy show. Yeah, that one. That one. Uh, um, yeah, extended into the '70s, and that was the. I think. I, yeah, that's the only. Did Mod one. Squad make it into the '70s? Yeah, Mod Squad may have, but that, that was more. They were more police officers. Yeah, yeah. Than Mission Impossible is kind of the last one. Spies. Uh, so Sunday, and and, oh, so. and they probably lasted uh, beyond. 1969 beyond the 60s because they weren't traditional spies sure. yeah. so they were you know in that purview but not i had jane you know. badler on recently and she was in the mission impossible remake in the late 80s that mm-hmm. they shot in australia and i've said this on the show a million times but they used the same scripts as the 60s show because it was during the writer's strike so they were like we'll just use the same scripts and so i mentioned that to her and she goes i didn't know that and then she's like it makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So where are we? We're Sunday evening. Sunday, we right? got a great man for un- from uncle uh, ad in this uh, on channel nine here. 
It's like a broken mirror with gunshots in it. Oh, there it is. Yes, yeah, yeah. J- Channel 9, Man from Uncles. A suspense drama. <laughs> So yeah, we're we're obviously uh, we're we're clearly watching uh, we're clearly watching the man from Uncle. This is the first night. season of Man from from Uncle, correct? Yes, sixty five, and and that's why I chose this art this uh, this TV guide was it was the first TV guide that has had a spy show on the cover. Mm-hmm. Get Smart had made it on. The girl from Uncle had made it on. Um, this night, Mission impossible. This night on Ed Sullivan is the U S television debut of the Rolling Stones. Oh, well then we absolutely have to watch that. Is that, is that where they, they, uh, they changed it from, uh, let's spend the night together to, Oh, uh, let's spend, spend some, some time. time I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. And Stiller and Mira. Okay, so we got to watch the Stones. Stiller and Stiller and Mira, uh, Ben Stiller's parents are on that. Ed yes. Sullivan episode with the, with the Rolling Stones. <laughs> It's always interesting looking back on some of those uh, those episodes of, you know, like when the Beatles were on for the first time, Martin Rossi. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. And, I... and uh, Davey, a young Davy Jones yep. was on at one point for Oliver. It's kind of interesting that you know, all these people were on, on on these shows. I've The Man from Uncle episode is very interesting to me because, number one, the TV Guide listing tells you who wrote the script, which is interesting. That's, uh, that never Script by up. Robert E. Thompson. I'm wondering if that's, like, something that he uh, negotiated. Yeah. Um, but the guest star in this episode is Carol O'Connor. Oh. Archie Bunker himself. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we're definitely watching that uh, on, uh, on Sunday night. And at 9 o'clock is one of my favorite creepy creepy sitcoms of all time my living doll oh my living doll <laughs> yes <laughs> yes <laughs> care to explain this one? so this was a one season show it started bob cummings who was a, a a 50s uh sitcom comedian who had a show called love that bob he was way too old for this show like this made it extra creepy he was probably pushing 60 in this show yeah playing a role written for like a like a goofy cute 22 year old type guy character and he had uh, a a robot that wasn't exactly a sex robot but kind of was uh played by julie newmar <laughs> and it wasn't a sex robot but it was a yeah sex yeah robot. everybody knew um and julie newmar is great being real weird in it um but it it's weird <laughs> <laughs> like it, it it's not particularly yeah, it, funny <laughs> No, yeah, it only la- it did it la- it lasted it's like thirteen episodes. It was like not even a yeah, full season. Half a season, yeah, probably rightfully. So I think that's yeah, about right. Yeah, it was not a weirdly. It's easy to see now. It's streaming. That it came out on DVD. Yeah, I mean, actually, true. that probably tells you how creepy sexual it is. <laughs> There's a market for it. <laughs> There's a market for people who want to watch Living Doll. Yes. yes. Uh, there's also a cool uh, uh, ad here for shows for. Uh, show stranglehold yes it has a cool cool artwork on that it's like skeleton hands but they're kind of like x-ray looking yeah and it's a uh, award theater sunday it stars mcdonald carey and barbara shelley um I, so i imagine it's an english production yeah. um it doesn't let's see where is it listed here yeah it's a 1964 movie an actor begins to feel that his gangster roles are beginning to influence his private life yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Then the then the movie Forces of Evil from 1949, which is a noir film, which I swear someone I don't think I've ever seen. It's that. pretty good, but someone probably just put it on because it sounded like a horror movie. But it's about <laughs> numbers racketeers and gang wars. Like it's not. That's what I want to watch on Halloween. Yeah, I mean, title be damned. Do you know this show, Surfside Six? Surfside Six, yeah, it was like um, uh, uh, 77 Sunset Strip. Okay. Uh, Bourbon Street Beat. Because there's a character named Cha Cha. <laughs> uh, this episode's called Irish Pride. It just caught my eye. Uh, so yeah, that that was yeah, it was it was in that that uh, New Orleans beach beachfront. Uh, uh, Seems weird for sixty. Private Eye kind of police show. It's a cool show. Uh, so Monday, what'd you do? So Monday. Let me get to Monday here, and Monday. Monday evening. Um, uh, so so at seven o'clock, uh, I'm I'm starting my evening with a uh, Bachelor Father. Oh, you we talked about that last time. You enjoyed that yes. show. I I enjoy Bachelor Father a lot. So even though uh, Sergeant Bilko's on at that time, 
Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Bachelor Father. I'm a big fan of Bachelor Father. And uh, yeah, you can. Uh, this Bill Co is skippable. It's a clip show. So oh, okay, yeah, we could skip. We could skip Bill Co with then. Ed Perfect. Sullivan guest starring, and then they review segments from previous shows. <laughs> Okay, so then we're going. Yeah, we're going to Bachelor Father. Bachelor Father. He's a a playboy uh, uh, who uh, in, inherits his, his niece. He he he. Uh, he wins her in a uh, card game. W- wins her in a card. You know, his, I guess his brother died. They never really specifically say. And he has a uh, uh, um, uh, a butler, uh, an Asian butler, uh, who's part of the family as well. It's 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 it's, it's a bit like he's Silver a, Spoons. Uh, yeah, but with a girl and that's it <laughs> yeah pretty much he's a he's a high-powered lawyer so uh and he, he always gets he always gets he gets the best looking girls on this show of course <laughs> uh, but you passed up the adams family and this episode adams, about oh that's at the same time same too, time so just in time for halloween guest star don rickles and this is the halloween Ooh. episode they- ah forget okay i'm i'm, I'm sh- sorry bachelor father i'm sorry yeah, I got to go with Adam's family there, especially with Rickles. Yeah, and this, I, I don't care for the Rifleman, but I just love the title of the episode. That's on at the same time. It's called Mail Order Groom. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, if there were my ma- Mail Order Grooms, guys would be doing it's it. It's true. It's true. Back in, uh, <laughs> in the Rifleman days. Also, weirdly, 7 o'clock on a Monday night, there's a show called TV Kindergarten on. <laughs> And the episode is how people get ready for winter. <laughs> Maybe I'll switch over to that on a commercial. Yeah. Adam's family. Yeah. Just to, just to, just to check in, you know, make sure I'm okay for winter. There's a bunch of weird stuff at seven 30. That sounds interesting. Yeah, I've never seen is, any of these shows, but they sound kind of cool. To tell the truth. Uh, voyage, uh, voyage with the Von uh, Craig. Speaking of Batman. This yeah. this episode of Voyage. Nick Adams, too. Yeah, this episode's called the Turn Back the Clock. Nelson investigates a scientist's story about spending a year in a tropical prehistoric world located Whoa. in Antarctica. Oh, it's it's Voyage to the Bottom of the yeah. Sea. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's very, it was like Nick Adams. That's 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 cool. Richard I, I like Nick Adams. A star of the uh, uh Rebel Without a Cause. Yep. Uh, the Rebel, the TV show, and he was in uh, War the. Oh no, uh, Frankenstein conquers the world. Yes, that was the other another Japanese, Japanese movie that he yeah. shot the U.S. stuff for. And then it ate like it's a Halloween episode of Bewitched. And this is a great one. Oh, yeah. and you know what? All those those Halloween episodes of Bewitched are all really good. Yeah. So Samantha and her aunt Clara are outraged by by candy company's Halloween's ads, uh, picturing witches as ugly. <laughs> That's good. And this one, they and since the Candy King is a client of Darren's, he's an ad agency. Uh, decided to work on him to change the image. So they make okay. Darren look like a cartoon witch, like the big nose and the warts, yeah. and it's so he's he's in that makeup the whole episode. <laughs> Poor Darren. Andy is it interesting at eight thirty uh, because we have the Andy Griffith show and No Time for Sergeants. Yes. So, uh, kind of the. Uh, uh, both Andy Griffin. Uh, if you like Andy Griffin, you're torn. You're torn that day, yeah. But uh, Dick Van Dyke does not have a. There's no. I don't think there was ever a Halloween episode of Dick Van Dyke. The closest either. one that people. I don't think it aired on Halloween, but it's the dream episode with the walnuts and the aliens. Oh, with uh, Danny Thomas. Yes, yeah. That one kind of is a de facto Halloween episode, I think. Yeah, I guess. Was he from outer space? Something like that, yeah. Is there something weird? Yeah, it's a dreamy as that they're that everyone's like it's sort of invasion of the body snatchers and uh Mary Tyler Moore comes out of yeah. the closet riding that wave of walnuts. Walnuts, yeah. Um but at nine o'clock though, uh we have Danger Man. Yes. Uh again, cheap plug for my book. Uh <laughs> James Bond and the 60 Spy Craze. Uh so Danger Man, yeah, definitely have to go with uh Danger Man, which had uh, the Colonel's daughter. Uh, in India, Drake is tracing a leak uh, in military secrets. And this is this was called Secret Agent Man in the UK. Uh, Danger Man yeah. here. This is Patrick McGowan. Um, because of this show, he was offered James Bond after, uh, I think, before Connery is what I've heard. I think in the middle there. So when the, the Lazenby. Um, which he told them to go fuck themselves uh, is the quote, <laughs> I believe. And uh, and did the prisoner basically about how much he hated doing Danger Man. <laughs> yeah. The very uh, uh, 
indirect sequel, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 not well. It, it's not even a thinly veiled sequel. <laughs> no, not at all. Um. So, uh, ten o'clock. There's Alfred Hitchcock, and it's an episode that I j- don't know, and I think I've seen most of those episodes. It's a Ray Bradbury script. Yeah, which is unusual. I guess I'm going to give that one a whirl. Yeah. Uh, Alejandro Ray is in this. Yeah, it takes place in a Mexican border town. It sounds like Touch of Evil. Yeah. Um, my favorite Alfred Hitchcock, speaking of people who write Alfred Hitchcock, my favorite Alfred Hitchcock is one written by Roald Dahl. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's the one where a, a guy, he's on a, a, a cruise ship and he bets like what time the cruise ship will, will come to port. And it seems like he's going to be early, late. And so he j- tests somebody's hearing and he jumps off the ship, so the ship would have to stop and turn around and pick him up. But the lady was crazy, and nobody believed her. Oh, so it's like a boy cried uh, wolf kind of thing. That's very yeah, well done. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's always off of streaming services. Oh, weird. I so I don't know why. Well, he was doing Tells the Unexpected at that time as well. Yeah. I wonder if, because this did happen, they would rebrand episodes of foreign shows as anthology shows. So that might have been a Tales mm. from the Unexpected so maybe they just was, rebranded as a Hitchcock. It's a Hitchcock, that's true. Which could be yeah. why it didn't it doesn't it's not part of the syndication package. Yeah. Yeah, I never really looked at it. You see you see it you see it pop up every so often. You see it pop up, but never on like a streaming. Huh. Uh that's Tuesday. Funny. Peter Potamus show gets a full page ad. <laughs> and then also you could become a uh a TV guide boy. Uh Boy, yes. uh, you could uh, learn to accept responsibility and earn extra spending. Money. Which sounds is a normal thing. It's like a newspaper boy. Uh, you're delivering TV guides, but the term TV guide boy just sounds weird. <laughs> and actually, since I started doing the show, people who were TV guide boys have sent me stuff. And one of them I have somewhere is an apron, like a TV guide boy apron that has TV guide size pockets. So they could, Ooh. you know, have all the TV guides. And oh, that's thing. cool. Yeah, yeah. It's a bigger yeah. thing. Yeah. I'm sure people got uh, uh, finicky with their TV guides, oh, yeah. too. It's not like the paper where you could fold I it. mean, it was a big enough thing that it had its own dedicated uh, distribution delivery service. Yeah, that's true. All right. So so, so Tuesday evening, yeah, we're, we're going uh, Car 54, where yeah. are you? At, uh, Lisa Laughlin in this one as Tessie the Torso. This one's really funny. Yeah, I like that episode a lot. Tessie the Tor- arrives from Hollywood. Uh, yeah, okay. Muldoon are assigned to protect her. Okay, um, I do like Patty Duke, but but I uh, uh, I'm gonna go with Car Fifty Four. Um, Patty Duke, all the all, all, all the episodes are pretty surprised. Much I don't think Patty Duke ever had a Halloween episode, which you would think they would. No, surprisingly, yeah. you would. Yeah, you would think. Um, so uh so then we're gonna move over to uh 7 30 and um well jack benny's on I, I think i have to go uh jack benny on that one connie francis is in this one connie francis yeah jack, connie francis on jack benny Ooh, although a medley of songs associated with al jolson <laughs> very high likelihood there's blackface involved in that episode. <laughs> a thousand percent yes. sure that there's blackface yes. in that. <laughs> Might want to skip that. So <laughs> <laughs> uh then at 8 30 again we have uh, we've Man from Uncle. We've we're just watching a lot of Man from Uncle yeah. here. And uh Carol O'Connor again on this one. So this is part so. two, I believe, of the other episode. Yeah. So this oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Green, Green Opal Affair. Yeah, this is when they would air like multi part stories but have episodes airing more than once in a week. Well, we have to finish yeah. up on it. So Which is essentially what killed Batman sixty six. Yeah. <laughs> They're also selling nineteen sixty four P mint set of JFK Kennedy uh, half dollars in a sparkling plastic holder for only two ninety five. Hmm. Ten sets for it's big money in Close 1964, though. 2750? Yeah, there's, there's an ad earlier in this issue about moving to Florida where you can buy a house for $300. <laughs> do, I, do, do I want my 64 yes. set or my, my house in Florida? Man, uh, and an amazing ad. It's on at 1120. It's the late show, but Robert Mitchum. And the hunters. Oh, oh yeah, that's cool. That's a really cool ad. Channel seven. We can watch. He that. just looks that's badass amazing. in this ad. Like he's 
He always yeah, looks badass. He's not taking no shit. <laughs> uh, after that, you know, eh, it doesn't really seem like there's much going on, actually. Here's uh, a weird thing. I'm, there's a silent movie on because they'd air silent movies. I mean, they'd air silent yeah. movies even when we were kids on PBS. Um, but this is uh, 10 o'clock. They're showing a, a movie called The Toy That Grew Up from 1922 starring Lon Chaney. The original Lon Chaney. Lon Chaney. And this he plays, again, who? A Chinese laundry man (laughs) who's shipwrecked (laughs) in a small New England town. Channel 17 seems to be the one on this that that was showing the weird stuff. I think that they had the kindergarten show, stuff like that. There's an actor in this called Harrison Ford. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> which is not a normal that's not like a common sounding name it's not a common name yeah, very weird 1922 maybe a time yeah. traveler I, I could see him being in uh the lon chaney chinese laundryman movie <laughs> on wednesday that's a really cool ad child in danger yes. <laughs> hostess dana shore presents a pure x special for women on, on one of our country's most frightening problems child molestation and it's starring oh, <laughs> Nina Foch and Martin Landau. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a drama. It's uh this is the first show of the new season in the series of specials aimed at the female audience. It's Child in Danger. <laughs> a lady lawyer reluctantly takes on the defense of a man accused of attacking a little girl. Dinah Shore introduces it. Martin Landau plays the child molester. Um Ooh. yeah, this is in place Ooh. of uh General Hospital and Young Marrieds. <laughs> That's rough. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, yeah, then in uh, uh, Wednesday... Oh, speaking of uh, Japanese movies, again, not in the purview of primetime, but at 5 o'clock on Channel 7, they're showing Varen the Unbelievable from 1962, um, which yeah. I think was renamed. Uh, in Japanese waters, U.S. Navy experiments disturb a prehistoric monster lying beneath the sea. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, also that time, I think it... Five o'clock. Oh, there's also the through the time barrier. Yes, with uh, uh, with Superman. That's the one where they go back in time and they all have to wear like caveman loincloths. Yeah, because you you want to blend in. You don't want you don't right. want the cavemen and, and to get Perry suspicious. White does not look good yeah. in uh, in loincloths. All right. So then uh, then we, then when we get to the prime time, um, where are we here? So then uh, oh yeah. So so we have. Uh, it's a big Western mm. night. Big Western night, but McHale's Navy's also on. Uh, Got to go with McHale's Navy on that. Got Borg Nine, yeah. Tim Conway, yeah. yeah. Patty Duke. Another Patty Duke. Another Patty Duke. They love their Patty Duke here. Face of the community. Nah, we're not going to watch that. Uh, who's on Shindig? Who's on Shindig? Oh, what did Shindig have? The Dakotas. Um, Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas. Who do Great Balls uh, of Fire. Bobby Sherman. Dick and Dee Dee, The Blossoms, Chris Crosby, The Wellingtons. Yeah, nobody that I've heard of. Nobody. Bobby Sherman, probably. He does You Really Got Me. <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll maybe we'll catch the end of it if he's doing it at the but end. he's doing a Kinks cover? <laughs> Why not? That's got to be um, soulless. Yeah. Oh, oh most definitely. Uh, yeah. So I guess we'll go with that. We'll go with the end of it. But... Shindig was always interesting. Um, Shindig also, uh, um, you know, was it? Yeah, Shindig introduced Batman, the Batman, yes, the Batusi, like yeah. Well. So, um, not much going on this night. This is kind of a real boring. No, it's yeah, boring night to be. It's reruns honest. from earlier in the week, and then a bunch of pretty boring. Uh, although. I will say, I posted this on my social media uh, a, a while back on the Wednesday night thing because this is 1964, so it's a it's a, an election year. It says November third, there will be the night of the computer. Chances are you'll be on hand waiting for the mechanical marvels to announce the nation's next president. Complete details on television's election coverage next week in TV Guide. And I posted it because all these lunatics that are like, we need hand counted <laughs> ballots in the machines. Every ballot needs like to be Like the hand-counted. way that it was. And I'm like, really? In 1964 when we had computers do it then? Is that what you're <laughs> it's a really good point. <laughs> Here it is I in black that. and white. And your picture of the room size computer that probably had. 17,000 punch cards in order to count your vote, but still. (laughs) 
And there's a special called... That would easily get confused. Oh, yes. Polls and Computers. William H. Lawrence reports on the functions of polls and computers in the election campaign. <laughs> okay. Thursday, I better, better kick it up. Thursday, Thursday, this is a Munsters episode. It does not tell you what it is. I It's on in the afternoon, but I just love the show called You Don't Say. <laughs> <laughs> I assume it's a game show or a talk show. Oh, oh man. And then also in the afternoon at 4.30, Leave It to Beaver. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Ward's Baseball, where the, every time I watch that episode, any time I've ever seen that episode, it's Beaver picks up his father's baseball. Hey, look, this ball's autographed by Babe Ruth and Ty Cobb. Yes, Kong. yeah. And he goes, let's play baseball with it. And I'm going, <laughs> no, no, yeah. stop. Yeah, and they they lose it, and then they have to like f- make a forgery. Forge yeah. it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> just gets me upset Stupid thinking about Beaver. It. <laughs> that one and uh the one you ever see the episode where he has a uh monster monster sweatshirt? sweatshirts yeah yeah and i just go but what are you t- no don't don't wear it to school wear, put something i on desperately underneath. want someone to sell those and i've never yes. found anyone that yes, does i've always i've always looked like that's got a that's an easy sale come on etsy <laughs> you have at least two sales yeah. here rolling in the dough <laughs> Uh, yeah, we got some ads. I don't know what this special for fall is. Uh, it looks- oh, it's TV guide. Oh, subscription, subscription ad. Yeah. Subscription so 65 ad. issues is $5 and 85 cents, a $9 and 75 cent single copy value. Yeah. Yeah. Ad for Smirnoff vodka. The monsters, Beekman's gum. the monsters that night is low Cal monster. This is when uh, Herman tries to lose weight, oh, there it is. but Paul Lind is in this episode. He plays oh, the doctor. Okay, gotta go Paul this Lind. one is pretty funny. Although this one is a, a perfect representation of how the monsters was just a regular sitcom where they looked weird. And the fact that they were monsters had no bearing on the plots, <laughs> uh, which is why the Adams family was the superior show. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Those are fighting well, words, but okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go to my grave. That's a hill I will die on. <laughs> uh, Flintstones, a Halloween episode called A Haunted House is Not a Home. Fred will yes. inherit his rich uncle's estate if he'll spend one night in the gentleman's spooky mansion. Is is that a, is, can I legally do that? No, I actually, I was on an NPR show called You're the Expert. And uh, one of the episodes I did was the expert was an expert on the rights of the dead. And as part of that, she was an expert in contract law about will stipulations, and none of them are legally binding. <laughs> ah, darn. Well, there there goes all my plans. Yeah, as far as, like, you have to do this to get, like, that kind of stuff. Like, it's binding to be, like, this person gets that. <laughs> but, like, that you have okay. to sleep in a haunted house or fight your, each other to the death or anything like that. <laughs> you have to be I this guy's know. butler. Like, none of that. <laughs> none of that is legally binding. <laughs> Man, it's just no fun. It's when America uh, lost its way. I know. Uh, 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 we have to go with the 1030 Steve Allen. Yes. Steve Allen has Rich Little uh, impersonating. Who is Rich Little doing impersonations of before Nixon? Oh, because all of his well, Rich, all of his impressions are Nixon. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he was on a show in 66. And I can't think of which one it was. I think it may have been. Uh, oh, occasional. Wife. Okay. I think he was. I think he was on that show. Um, he definitely was probably a talk show mimic. Andy Williams shows that. film clips from My Fair Lady. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Remind me not to watch that. Fred one. asks members of the Osmond family to ad lib harmonies while he plays the saxophone. <laughs> Oh jeez, <laughs> that sounds creepy. Like this gets better and better. We went over Mr. Williams' house and he made us sing harmonies <laughs> while he played the saxophone. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> There's also a show called Antiques with George Michael. Obviously not that George Michael, <laughs> but I I like to think it was. And this episode is was... George Michael shows a collection of early American clocks. <laughs> That's a much better episode yeah. than than anything. Uh, yeah. So Thursday, Perry Como does not have any. No, it kind of, I mean it up. It's a little better because you got the monsters, but you know it's Friday. Better really not, take not it home here because yeah, we got it. We got to hit it out of the park with this um, with Friday night. 
And it looks like, oh, again, TV Kindergarten. Uh, ma- oh, making trick or treat bags. Nice. Making I would love bag. to see how weird that is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I think we absolutely have to watch that. Um, but uh, and then there is a election uh, special uh, 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 episode of the honeymoon. Yes. Uh, where where he runs for office. And Art Carney in the Bob Hope drama that night, the Timothy heist. Ooh. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, but I, I think I think I got to stick with my uh, um, my making a trick or treat yeah. bag. That's, did you use a pillowcase or did you have a bag? I had a bag, like one um, of those plastic yeah. pumpkin bags. Yes, they don't. Yes, one thousand percent. It was a plastic pumpkin. They didn't bag. hold much. <sighs> yeah, I guess you're right. I don't know. The pillowcase, yeah, probably worked. Yeah, a little king better. size pillowcase. So then... <laughs> There's a children's show called What's New. And uh, after the kindergarten <laughs> thing, and this episode, it's alligators hunting underwater, moon landings, and folk music of the United States. <laughs> Those are all new. <laughs> and this is the night before Halloween. This is Friday, by the yeah. way. Yeah. So this this is this is the key night for Halloween type things. Oh, so we have the Adams family. Yep. There you go. Bank robbers uh, who've uh, pulled a Halloween heist are invited to share in a fun evening with the Adams Yep, this family. is the Don Rickles one, airing again. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So then we're absolutely watching that one again. Um, there's a lot of bank heists. It was very popular. Bank heists were very popular at this time. A lot of crooks. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of ex-boxers <laughs> pulling bank heists. I would think, again, being the night before Halloween... We'd get a couple more monsters. Yeah, and it's a Friday. Like, that seems like it would be... But you have... Prime time for monster movies here. A lot of gangster movies instead. You get The Rise and Fall of Legs Diamond, Top Secret Affair, Scarlet Street. Yeah, nothing. Huh. I, I, I Again, the, the, the Mill of the Stone Woman was on earlier in the, in the week. We got a couple cool call, Halloween episodes. I'd be curious to see next week's issue... Because that is actual Halloween, and it falls on oh, a maybe, Saturday. Yeah. So maybe some cool stuff is 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 there. Um, oh, the Avengers is on that. Night. Yeah, this one's about like a haunted penny or something. <laughs> yeah, okay. there's a really good. There's a review of Bewitched by Cleveland Armory, and the photo of him is fantastic. Yeah, with the way oh, with the yes. pipe. Yes, because <laughs> looks like. Uh, uh, Niedermeyer. Yes. From, uh, He's like, oh, bewitched. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 the thing that, that really stuck out for me is the uh, very last picture uh, in, in the TV guide. And it's a picture of a, uh, a leather jacket yes. with a skull and crossbones yep. and then a, le- a letterman jacket yep. right next to it. And it says, uh, your United Way helps... Uh, change teenage style. That first one is so uh, much better, and that is a badass yeah, leather jacket. Like, was, <laughs> no contest. <laughs> Way cooler. Way co- It's a real cool skull and crossbones on there with the yeah. leather jacket. This would have the complete opposite effect. <laughs> I was thinking it was the opposite. Yes. Like, oh, we're gonna take <laughs> these squares and make them cool. <laughs> we're gonna make them cool. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so United Way is actively. Uh, uh, rebelling against or uh, saving teens from uh, listening to punk delinquentism uh, in the teletype, <laughs> which is uh, the other last page there, which is like the you know the rumor mill kind of thing. Uh, they say mm-hmm. Anne Francis, who foiled Robert Vaughn in the Man from Uncle episode on October sixth, returns to try again on November tenth, which is not really a scoop. But I forgot that she kind of made her TV name on Man from Uncle and then had Honey West after that. Oh yeah, it's true. Um, oh, which yeah. not really a spy yeah, show. I guess true. more of a detective show but sort of in that yeah. in that in the same way yeah because she was it the, the, it was wackiness more than a defective detective thing it was like she had a serval cat and new kung fu like it was more it was kind of more in that Avengers. Yeah, it's not something that i bring up in the book i think for that reason well were there any uh thing that you discovered while researching the book that was a real surprise or like an underrated gem um oh boy that's a that's a good question uh, definitely a number of those Euro spy films, you know, I, I, I just had never really watched. Um, so, uh, you ever watch uh, that man, that man in Rio? Oh yeah. Or that man from Rio. Yep. 
Uh, again, film that I, I, ju- I just had never watched uh, previous to that. I thought that that was really cool. And, uh, you know, certainly was uh, a, a film that at the time critics were falling over each other to say, yes, spy films are the best. You know, these are new and they're incredible. And then by 66, everybody's gone. Eh, it's been done. Yeah. You know, they're falling. The same critics are falling over each other to go. Eh, I think it, don't bother. I, it wasn't designed as a, uh, I just sent you that bad movie Bible, uh, James, oh, knockoffs, by the way. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't intended to be a children's genre, but I think once it became evident that it became that it was no longer interesting to like yeah. adults. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, yeah. Once it, once it started getting really over the top, yeah, that was kind of the, the death sentence. And again, when it's, and then it lost, it, it lost its charm when it was, it got more realistic. Do you ever see the, um, the chairman with, um, no Atticus Finch, um, uh, Gregory Peck. Uh, yeah. Peck. Uh, and Gregory Peck is some diplomat. And so it's it has a real world p- premise that he's going to meet Chairman Mao. So and, and the, the, the the alternative title to it was the most dangerous man in the is world. Is he playing the same character uh, he does in the omen? Also a diplomat. <laughs> yes. Uh but they put like a, a mechanical, uh, like a, a device in his head, and then they're so it's kind of a whack miniature in Canada um, kind of thing. Yeah, no, 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 no. They're they're planning on blowing it. Oh, up when he meets with Chairman, does he Matt. know? No. Okay, so it's 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 almost like Escape from New York, sort of. They make him into a human bomb, sort of. Yeah. So the, so he has this chip in his head where they could see what he's doing, and it's like, and then they're debating whether or not. Okay, when he meets Mao, are we gonna? kill him and Mao. Uh, So it was like an over-the-top gimmick. It actually had a similar countdown uh, like from uh, Goldfinger. But, you know, here you also have this real-world person. Like, he's he's going to meet a real world dictator. I wonder what the it's implications awesome. of that were with with relations because there was the interview that Seth um Seth uh, Seth Rogan um yeah, Seth inter- Rogan. Uh, that comedy where they were going they were supposed to kill Kim Jong Il and yeah. that was because of that movie North Korea hacked Sony <laughs> and yeah. leaked all these emails and stuff and it was like a big international incident. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Were, I don't. I don't know how. I don't know. I don't know how much China was was importing at the I time. I mean, I guess there but, were more incidents of that. I mean, even we would get stuff from Hong Kong, which it wouldn't. It wouldn't have cared about Mao. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess they probably thought there was nothing wrong with that because during World War Two, you'd have like Hitler depicted and stuff all the time. So yeah. Um, but yeah, that like real time uh, foreign leader thing, especially in spite. Yeah, it was real, real foreign leader, and like the trailer. Like, like it was just full of Chairman Mao. Like it was like <laughs> That's this what is Chairman That's what Mao. Sells. <laughs> it's it's interesting that you bring that up. It makes me think that one of the strange things about spy movies, in 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 TV, is they never mention political parties, <laughs> and they right. never. I can't think of an incident aside from that one you just cited, where they ever mentioned like real politicians or real world leaders. In uh yeah, our man Flint. One of them, it's President Johnson. Okay, and then in, in another one, they they flip flop. Like there's one that they specifically mention President Johnson, the other, um, it, it's not. Uh, and in the Batman movie, they never mention President Johnson, but uh, yeah, it's President Johnson. <laughs> it's Van Williams doing a. Um, Maybe the Green Hornet became the president. <laughs> doing a Texas accent. Have you ever seen the movie The Final Program? No. It's sort of a spy movie. Um, 
it was based on a, a Michael Moorcock book. And okay. it's from 1972, I think. And it's the people who made it did Dr. Fives and the Avengers, but it takes place in this like weird future London. And the main guy's kind of a spy slash like private detective. And it's bizarre. I love it because mm. it's so weird. Um, they have guns that shoot needles and like, one point there's a giant pinball machine that's actually like a like a dance club. It's really weird. Um but no, let's check that yeah, out. Yeah, if you like Fibes or the Avengers stuff, it's very much in that kind yeah. of um that style, but it's much more like weirdly metaphysical. <laughs> yeah. It's like if Clockwork check Orange were an Avengers episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know. I could see that. that's not a far. No, leap. that's true. That's true. Not that far. That's that's not. <laughs> you know, that's, that's so they could get the book anywhere books are sold, or do they go to the publisher? Anywhere books are sold. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you know, again, uh, every pretty much every online format has uh, has it up. Um, and do you have the next one on on teed up? So I, I, I am. I am. Uh, I'll give you the scoop okay. again. Uh, I, I'm, I'm working on. Uh, same strike zone, obviously, uh, but uh, as as we talked about, uh, I'm also I also love monster movies, and the next book will 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 deal with. Oh, that. nice! That's so, that's we'll my leave we'll leave it at that for that's right my now. area so, of interest. Yeah, monster movies are are certainly my strike yes. zone, and and that was uh, certainly as we talked about, you know, growing up that that was you know oftentimes that was the only way you got to see some of these films was. You know, staying up late at night, um, hoping to catch something. My PBS channel would run the most bizarre uh, uh, horror films, and uh, you know that, that's that's where I fell in love with them. So, writing about them now is is uh, um, just a whole. Lot and it'll be this era, this kind of sixties. Yeah. Craze. Oh yeah. Yeah. Same. Is yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Um, you know, the classic monster yep. era. You know, drag it into the 60s, into the Well, 70s. I'll point you to my episodes with Stephen Bissett. Uh, okay, <laughs> cool. We mentioned, we, we look at 50s and 60s issues of TV Guide and Halloween. There's some, nice. and Bissett knows everything about monsters that I've ever encountered in my life. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for coming back to the show. When the, when the monsters thank are you. released, we'll have to do this for a third time. Uh, yes. And I, I uh, I'm looking forward to the book. I'm looking forward to checking it out. James Bond and 60 Spy Craze, applause books. Uh, again, anywhere where fine books are sold. There's Tom, the second time around, when he gets that third monster book to be named in the future. Uh, we'll have him back, buy that book about spies. You can do it very, uh, you can do it without letting anyone know. Uh, you can secretly buy that book. I think that would be appropriate, uh, for, given the con the content of the book. I'm rambling today, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go sleep. How about that? <laughs> um, but I'll be awake next week for a brand new edition of TV Guidance Counselor. So I hope to see you then for that brand new edition of TV Guidance Counselor. I think at one point there was a cupcake gun or something.